Next, we'll talk about thermodynamic. And this is not one of our traps, it's one of our competitors, but it's a thermo thermodynamic trap nonetheless. And one of the big advantages of the thermodynamic is, uh, is that it only has one moving piece. It has a fixed seat, which is actually part of the body of the trap, and there's just that one disc that goes up and down. So sometimes people confuse these with thermostatic. They're two different types of traps. There's thermodynamic and thermostatic. They're completely different traps. And they respond to energy difference between condensate and steam. More accurately, they are activated by flash steam. So the ones that cold themselves and uh, other manufacturers sell, some of them will have a strainer built in, others won't. It's just a matter of personal preference. The, when you have a strainer built in, uh, one of the dangers is that the strainer doesn't get cleaned out or flushed out enough and it can end up plugging up the, the trap, or you can have just a trap without the strainer. So basically, uh, uh, thermodynamic has one hole in the middle where the condensate goes out and then three holes that surround it. So if you looked at, if you took the cap off, you just unscrew it, put it on a <coughs> take a wrench to it. If you looked inside of the trap, you'd have one hole in the middle where the condensate comes out and you'd have three little holes like that. So it goes <coughs> up and through there and up through those passages. The condensate causes the disc to lift up, and these two are very on-off. They're not meant for any applications where you have uh, modulating flow. It's not definitely not for a heat exchanger. It's only for where you have a constant pressure and constant load. They don't handle changes in load all that well. So as you can see from the, the graphic, the liquid comes up through the middle, forces the disc off its seat, and then eventually uh, steam replaces the condensate, the flash steam builds above the disc, and the, the steam has a higher velocity, so it causes a low pressure zone underneath the disc that draws it towards the seat, and the flash steam above it pushes it, so you have two action. You have the, the higher velocity of the steam underneath, drawing the disc towards the seat, and the flash steam above it pressurizing and pushing down on the disc. So that's what it means by they're activated by flash steam. And I'll go to the graphic to show you, tells you a bit how it works. So air, condensate, lift the disc up. And you notice the separate chamber on the side. And that's like a ring around, and the liquid in the air are allowed to vent. Eventually, hot steam and condensate enter the body of the trap. and the flash steam holds the disc down. Eventually the flash steam will condense, the disc will pop off and let the condensate through. And when these are installed outdoors, if there's rain or water or snow that hits the top of the, the, the cover, that can make them operate quicker because they'll make the, the flash steam condense quicker. So that's why they, if they're installing them outdoors, it's nice to put a cover on them or cover them up with some sort of uh, insulation so that uh, you don't affect their operation. Everybody clear on how they work? Um, one good thing about the trap, I don't have it with me anymore, but imagine if this was a thermodynamic, you can install them sideways or even upside down and they'll still work. Whereas the float with thermostatic or a buckle trap, they have to be always installed exactly how it says on the, the body of the trap. So. Uh, with the thermodynamic, they're a lot more forgiving in that case. What I mean is, uh, I've seen this a few times. The float <coughs> trap gets installed that way. And it'll just the steam will just blast right through, or even worse, like that. Inside, you know, there's a float. It's hanging like that. If you install it like that, your float is just going to dangle. The steam is going to blast right through. They have to be installed that way. And they have to be almost perfectly aligned. A lot of them will put an arrow. It says arrow points towards the floor. But sometimes that gets ignored. So um, they have to be installed exactly the way the manufacturer tells you to install them. Whereas the thermodynamic, you can get away with not doing that. The bucket trap is the same. If you install them sideways or a 
that will never operate. So you have to make sure that those mechanical traps are installed exactly as the way you're supposed to. <coughs> so here is advantages and disadvantages of our I'm very bad with my pointer. Keep losing, keeping it high. So simple construction, small and light, so the well half inch, three quarter inch will have the same capacity as one of these big bucket traps. So that's one of the big advantages. I mean, they don't take up as much room, and there's less thermal loss because the body is that much smaller. Not uh, any any position. Operation easily checked. You can hear these operate on their, on their own. You don't have to have a separate device. You know how they list, how they sound. So you can walk by them and hear if they're operating or not. They're not. They won't be damaged by freezing or water hammer. They'll operate over a wide pressure range, and uh, they'll start rapid cycling before they fail wide open. So that's what they mean by gradual failure. Typically, they don't just fail wide open. They'll just start. Not closing as well before they completely fail. And disadvantages because they don't have a separate air vent, they don't handle air all that well. So in startup, they can um, bind possibly. Sensitive to excessive back pressure, noisy discharge. Um, in the case of Domtar, back in the days when the EB Eddy Domtar was in the river, we used to do the um, trap audit. I was working for a different company and I did the trap audit every year, and a lot of times they put little disc traps on radiators inside the guys' offices. Well, these were uh, mechanical planners or maintenance planners. So I guess they didn't care as much, but um, if they're installed on a radiator, you can hear them rattle. They make a lot of noise. They're, they're very noisy. And if I was working in an office, I wouldn't want that. So that's just um, a caution with these typical rad traps that you see. You don't even hear these. They, they just sit there and they kind of hiss away. You don't even notice them. They, they're very unobtrusive where these, you, you know they're there. And marginal dirt handling, they can't get plugged up with dirt. 